There's a script? There is a script, strangely enough, and it says, Greetings, and welcome to Channel Other Doc. I'm Jim, I use he, him pronouns, and this is the finale of our mini-campaign of Tremulous, uh, Shadows Under the Ice. Uh, Tremulous is a game of eldritch or Lovecraftian horror uh, that uses the haiku system, which draws heavily on games that are powered by the apocalypse, as well as taking some inspiration from games like Fade and Fiasco. Uh, for this game, we've been uh, using the playset The Frozen Wasteland, uh, we are down a couple of players today, unfortunately, uh, because a, a series of haphazard uh, events have happened to folks. Um, um, so uh, Katie could not be with us today, and uh, Jasper also is uh, stuck either at work or fighting tornadoes. We're not sure which, possibly a combination of both. Um, and so uh, we are we are soldiering on uh, to conclude this thing. Um, so, yeah, you know, you work with what you got. You got to do this. Um, so we're doing that. Let's let's talk. Uh, let's talk briefly to, uh, once again to our uh, uh, to, to our heroes here and uh, see what happens. Um, so first we will start with Anino. Hello. Oh, my gosh. Hi, guys. Uh, Anino here. I am playing the part of Harold Hill, the antique and antique accessory salesman. Excellent. And Levi. Hello, I am Levi Phipps, and I will be playing Mitchell McCready, the uh, pilot, World War One vet, and group screw up. <laughs> you haven't screwed up anything too 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 badly, actually, as of yet, as far as I can tell. Well, okay, you did you did run your yes. guy unconscious, but that's you know that's par for the course. Um, let us have hazardly talk about things that happened last time, and uh, we will uh, get into this and see what happens. Um, now that there. This, this could end pretty quickly. I was thinking, you know, it's a finale. It could go over. But now that there are only two of you, uh, there are only two people for the monsters to chase, then, you know, it's, uh, you, know, you never know. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's see. So last time we had, uh, let's see, we had them doing things with, uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, Yelena, uh, who runs the, uh, the local tavern and, uh, and tavern hotel thing. Um, and, uh, you know, Elena was telling them about the Darkling Witch that lives out in the woods, uh, and, uh, that, uh, she is, uh, often, uh, you can attract her attention by looking in a mirror. Uh, she kind of went crazy about a year ago after an expedition went out, uh, to, uh, try to, uh, do something, apparently. Actually, the, the, the nature of the expedition was, at that point, not known. Um... But, uh, it, uh, it, apparently, um, the, the town, the, the town drunk slash crazy person Igor went out and, uh, along with, uh, comrade Karpenko and a couple of others to, uh, go and do something. Uh, ah, yes, the music is louder. Let me go ahead and fix that by suddenly the music ending. Um... Let's just go ahead and fix that across the board. Alright. Hopefully that's okay. Let me know if that's okay. Weird things happened. Um, good, good. Alright, we're good. Excellent. Um, so yes, basically, uh, we had, uh, we had that happen. Um, between, uh, uh, where, you know, Yelena was ta talking about these things that happened. They kind of, you know, Yelena asked them, okay, when you leave on your plane, will you take my granddaughter, Yelena, with you? And McCready said yes. Um, because yeah, Yelena is afraid for her. Yelena doesn't want her staying around here because of all the strange things that are going on. People apparently get really strange and foggy inside of town about certain things. For, you know, remembering certain things, things used to be different. But Yelena mostly just keeps to herself. Um, and apparently Galena was protected, or she, she felt that, or was assured by someone that, uh, Galena was protected. Um, but, uh... Yeah. I don't know how we're going to explain that at customs. It's an excellent... Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's a <laughs> bit of a problem. Um, yeah, sure it's the, you know, late 20s, but still, 
Um, immigration is still a thing, so uh, Yelena doesn't really understand how it works. When Galena got back to the pub, and they told her this was uh, going you know, a thing that they, they were going to, ha to have happen, uh, this actually was a bit later, she just leapt up and started arguing nonstop with her grandmother about it. And we'll see the fruits of that, whatever that may be. Um, just us Amer it's just us Americans doing our job to fix other people's problems. That's for right. Them. God bless America. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, so anyway, um, where am I? Digressing. Here I will. I can crank that down a little bit. Um, for what it's worth. Uh, but uh, yeah, what's happening? Uh, so. Uh, so there was a little bit of talk about that, but essentially that's, you know, they found out that's why there aren't mirrors in the village. If you look into her eyes, and you see her eyes in the mirror, that's when she has you. Um, also, apparently she drove the Domovoy locally crazy, which you're sort of getting the impression are like hearth spirits, basically. Um, but in any case, uh... So, uh, they went off to the, uh, uh, to the fort, uh, nearby to talk to Comrade Karpenko, who's one of the prisoners there, uh, because they had to about a year ago when he came back from that little expedition into the forest, they had to lock him up, because he was also out of his mind. Uh, but perhaps more violently so than... I had a drink, it was sitting right here, now it's not sitting right here, I suspect I know what happened to it, we'll find out later. Anyway... <laughs> Um, it's way over there. Um, so yes, uh, so that was a thing. Um, so yeah, they went to, they went to the fort to try to talk to it. It turned out, uh, Harold had a telegram, uh, from his boss, Mr. Strickland. Um, apparently, uh, in the telegram, uh, there, the Strickland revealed that the financial partner on this venture is uh, that, that has until now not been spoken of. Their initials are AR. Um, and also explained in the telegram there is a particular book, a thin volume, uh, blonde, uh, a thin black volume, uh, then that's like the only uh, thing, book they want to recover from the, uh, from the wreckage uh, that, that of this uh, dirigible that went down during the war. Uh, in, uh, at a crash site not too far from here. That's the only book that uh, that this AR person wants. This AR person is also the person who is employing Charlie, who is with them, a and potentially ex-gangster, perhaps, um, who uh, was uh, was here with uh, was was here with Dottie uh, and is acting in her interest. Um, so they go to the. Uh, so the, you know they're at the fort. They get the uh, they get the telegram, um, and uh, which Harold reads and then puts away. Uh, they then go to talk to Karpenko. Karpenko is kind of not all there, um, and uh, reveals a few things. Um, most notably that uh, apparently they they made him sign his name in a book. Went, uh, the witch apparently you went to see the witch said something about the witch not being able to touch anything. Uh, not able to touch the books or the things in the library directly uh, that, that, that were on the uh, that were on the dirigible, but uh, she made him sign his name in the book and then things, then his perspective changed and he started talking about seeing the universe from the outside and uh, he was talking about uh, basically having to uh, having to serve someone um, uh, that he was sort of referring to as a demon sultan, um, and become part of their court, uh, when, when one signs the name of the book. Um, so, that apparently was sort of what made him snap and come back. He also, they, they asked him to draw a map, um, of, uh, of where the crash site is. Uh, so they, for that, uh, Harold provided him with a notebook 
Uh, and uh, so he, uh, and a pencil, and he went ahead and he drew a map, but then on another page he drew something else. He tore the page out, slapped it down, and then vanished from the cell. Uh, they then saw that the page had some kind of arcane symbol written on it. Um, Mitchell, being the uh, upstanding uh, young, uh, the upstanding lad that he is, uh, knocked at the door to inform the guard that the prisoner was gone. Um, gar and, uh, you know, obviously Harold and Gray were not doing too well upon seeing this. This was, like, kind of a shock. Um, guard opens the door. Mitchell tells the guard this. The guard looks past them and you know, doesn't know what they're talking about. They turn around, and Karpenko's there once again sitting in a cell. Uh, just took a quick trip out. Just wanted to nip out for some air. That was all. Um, because again, he doesn't want to leave because there's someone in town, he thinks, that is controlling everything that is... Uh, uh, that, that he doesn't want to have to see. Someone who perhaps hired him for a job a while back. Um, and uh, so, you know, it's safer in the fort. But he was just doing what he did by way of demonstration and uh, explained that that, uh, that arcane symbol was something found in one of the books. So they grabbed those things, were escorted out because, you know, they were acting kind of nuts. Gray kind of tried to attack someone randomly with an axe because Gray was having flashbacks. Um, Gray also realized who Rothstein was at that time, and I, I sent a private message to... Uh, to Jasper about that, specifically, and we'll see if anything, uh, well, perhaps there will be some more exposition coming up, we will see. But ever since that point, uh, and again, as, uh, that was one another, th this being another thing that, uh, Carpango revealed, apparently he knew about, uh, Rothstein, apparently, is supposedly, so perhaps that's the R in A-R, um, and was just sort of taunting them with that name. As though thinking, no, that's who you're really working for, isn't it? Um, <coughs> ever since they left there, uh, Charlie had been kind of silent um, about that whole thing. They go back into town. That's That was when they got back to the pub briefly and you know, told Galena uh, about uh, taking her home. And then she got into an argument with Yelena and that continued. Uh, then... They decide that then uh, there was all they also spoke briefly with uh, Lev Dreitzer, who is the uh, town fixer. Uh, Dreitzer informed, well, Harold specifically, that um, you know he wasn't able to get hold of the other possessions, the, the other the other dolls, but he knew where they were. He was able to find them. Uh, they were at the tailor's shop. Um, the tailor, uh, the tailor's name is Antasha. Um, and, uh, you know, the tailor is a peculiar fellow, he was saying, and so I wasn't able to get it from him, but uh, Harold then gave him uh, large sums of money, three wealth worth of money, to go forth and uh, purchase more items with this sign on it, the, this symbol of a tree uh, that uh, are on a couple of items they've found so far, um, including an axe that uh, Gray has or had. I know that we handed the axe to McCready. I can't remember if Gray got the axe back or not. That's an interesting question. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll answer that in a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, so there was that. And um, yeah, that, that's a, that was a symbol that uh, I think someone at some point identifies as the sign of the elders. Looks like a tree. Um, so after that point, they, uh, you know, they then get up and they go to the tailor. Tailor isn't in the, uh, the main part of the store. There is a second floor, but they don't go up there. Instead, they look in a back room, uh, or, uh, Harold and Charlie look in the back room where there is a, uh, apparently a symbol drawn on the floor under, that, uh, that a rug was not entirely hiding. A symbol not unlike the one in the, uh, uh on that page that they have, that they got, that, uh, Karpenko drew. Um, at this point, while they're in there poking around, um, from upstairs, uh, it sounds as though there's a, a conversation happening. From upstairs comes Antasha. And M Mitchell tries to distract Antasha for a little while until they make a noise trying to climb out the window. 
uh, in uh, Harold makes noise trying to climb out the window uh, uh, from from the the room where back room where he's not supposed to be. Um, and Tasha turns around, sees them there, asks them what they're doing, and uh, Mitchell uh, uh, clocks him with the, the butt of his gun. Uh, and Tasha then goes down like a sack of potatoes. And uh, then more sounds of someone descending stairs are heard. And into the room comes Dr. Barbashev uh, from upstairs, uh, the, the other party with whom he was speaking. Uh, Barbashev, who apparently runs the town in one way or another, um, the specifics of which have not really been gotten into yet, um, seems to be in opposition to the witch, kind of wants to get hold of the books, um, but understands the difficulties, but apparently has been trying to keep out the witch's influence, he says. And as they're talking about the books, he explains, you know, uh, Harold basically kind of makes a deal with them where he's like, okay, well, we'll talk about the books at the end, after we survive this, if we survive this, but we need to, uh, you know, whether you get any of these books will be helped rather, along rather a lot if, uh, uh, if you help us, basically. And uh, so... So Barbashev will, you know, starts talking to them about it, and he, he, he tells them a little bit about what's going on out there. With they, and again, they haven't done, un, unspooled the whole thing yet. That may be about to happen. Um, but he does tell them, you know, describe that it's really one book that's causing the Darkling Witch to go mad. She had not been mad, but she got, apparently, he used the word inhabited. There was interference of some kind. And that apparently it was in some way... He says partially his fault. Um, it was a number of years ago. Uh, and that uh, the book, which apparently has gotten to her, just being in its presence, he says the books are still on the, uh, on the dirigible. But, uh, yeah, the book itself, uh, the one book out of the whole series of books, that the series, the whole collection, uh, that's causing the problems, thin volume... Once again, gold leaf on the cover, made from the animal hide, the hide of a creature that no longer exists on this planet, or on this world. And uh, the title of the book is The Book of Azathoth. And that was where we left off. So as we transition back, we are once again, we once again find ourselves uh, in the... Uh, in the barber shop, doctor's office, barber shop. And uh, so that's kind of where we are in the conversation. Barbershop has actually gotten up and he's sort of checking over Antasha. At this point, he's kind of kneeling down, checking him out. Azov. That's the. Doesn't sound like a fine American name. <laughs> a little bit Greek to me. Uh, it's a bastardization of Arabic, uh, as uh, best as we, so we can't really s we can't really say the name very well. It's uh, not meant for human tongues to pronounce. Well, he'll be all right. He's just going to have a bit of a headache when he wakes up. Uh, shakes his head. You said that something with the book and getting out of the dredge bolt. That was, that was your mistake. You said, <laughs> "What's your involvement in all this?" Yeah. Before keep the town in order. I can tell you, but I don't know. This is one of those things. Once you know it, you can't unknow it. Are you going to be all right knowing it? I'd prefer it if it's not spread. I'm pretty decent at keeping secrets. So, so at that point, Harold Hill is just going to give him a stare. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> He's going to give Mitchell a stare. 
Secrets, huh? Secrets. Yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose if it's a problem, I can always make you forget afterward. Is that what you do with the water that uh, all the really foggy people seem to be drinking? It's a protective, uh, it's a precaution. It's uh, to keep them from going out and joining the witch. Well, and what's protecting you from joining the witch? Yeah, <laughs> I have several protections. Well, is it kind of like that rune I saw underneath the rug in the back room there? Kind of like that. Similar source. <clears throat> well. So if you have all these sorts of powers, why aren't you taking down the witch yourself? And I told you, she knows when I'm coming. We have a kind of an understanding that I established when I came into this area. But uh, she is not herself. She has not been herself since, uh, uh, since the war. Since the books got here. If the book were to disappear, would she return back to normal? Uh, hopefully, as we get it away from, from her area of influence, then as she feeds on the forest, the forest feeds on her. It's a whole cycle. She's one of the thousand young, so that's how it works for her. But, uh, no, it, uh, you get it away from her. It will not affect her anymore. It will affect whoever is got it in their possession. <laughs> But, uh, so that's a bit going to be a bit of a trick. There are ways of locking it down, but uh, you'll have to resist its call. Well, not like the American spirit to be conquered, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is so not me. Uh, um, he nods. Okay. <laughs> yeah, perhaps, uh, perhaps you're uh, just bloody-minded enough for it not to uh, not to affect you. This is why I ask you questions about Texas. Mm. Mm. How does one lock this said book? Lock. That'd be great if it had a lock. I was working on something not unlike that. It's not ready yet, unfortunately. <laughs> It may... there are rituals... there is a ritual I can perform on it that will at least hold it once it is... Uh, once it is my presence, but uh, again, I can't go out there. <coughs> the books... Uh, the books are mine. This is why I want them back. Just gonna tilt his head and be like, huh. Oh. I suppose you see him like a reader. Ah, uh, well, it's a... It's a rather, uh, spiraling habit. <laughs> yeah, one might say. And yeah, now, yeah, once again, for, for those who those just joining us, the those books are supposedly, the part of the reason they're out here to get them is that, uh, and they're such a big deal, is they were supposedly um, the, uh, the part of the library and uh, of, the, of the Romanov family um, before they were ousted from power. Um, and so, that's, so there's that. I mean, you're some sort of Russian royalty or something? <laughs> no. Uh, no, no more of those around. Uh, but, you know, you do what you can to try to help them out. Uh, help their country from going into the, uh, going into the trash. And uh, it happens anyway. Uh, but, you know, you do what you can. Do what you can indeed. People are coming. There are people coming. <laughs> apparently someone apparently someone's at his door. 
Um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to need to make sure that this is not uh, uh, an emergency or anything, as uh, okay. you know, uh, it's either an emergency or someone trying to uh, trying to convert me to their religion. One of the two things. Mm. Uh, but I want to make sure I, I, I rule that out. So, um, do you guys want to just chat for a second, or shall I go to break for a moment whilst I figure this out? <laughs> uh, we'll take questions from the audience. Oh, feel free. Uh, oh, yeah. Feel free to vamp. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 So um, this particular uh, campaign um, is a monthly campaign. So it's uh, about four sessions long. This is our fourth session. Um, I've been doing as many campaigns um, since February. Um, and I've been on every one yeah. so far. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've mostly been on the, um, uh, the one shots. Uh, at this up to this point, yeah. I uh, caught the tail end of that um that first one. Uh, that that went that went up uh, being pretty neat. Which one? The uh, the um, the noir one. Yeah, the noir one with uh, Yellow and Dingo. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a uh, very interesting. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, no one actually there, so I'm going to assume religious fanatics. Ah. Uh. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> always, always funny when that happens. Uh, someone, someone out there. Ah. So, uh, have we, uh, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Were you, were you, were you in, the, were you in mid-explanation of something? Or? Not really. Uh, no, not at all. Righto. Okay. What were we doing before reality intruded? Uh, so we were talking about how he was the actual original owner of the library. Yes, yes. He uh, he has just said that he uh, that they're his books. <laughs> ah. Well, he has I figured denied being royalty. Ah. Well, I figured if we're going to just uh, play all our cards out, know that. Uh, I am here to retrieve the entire library. You know, uh, it would be I would be uh, very appreciative if I could get those ba if I could get those back. It is, uh, however, worse comes to worse, you know. I guess I could just always wait it out again. It may be a while, though. That said, that the the Book of Azathoth is not something you want to just hand to someone. Huh. Well, it seems like we're just going to have to do a little bit of good old-fashioned negotiating here. Are, are, do you want this this book for yourself? Uh, no, I am doing it for my employer, Mr. Strickland, Strickland Antiques. Mm. The Strickland is going to, uh, going to sign his name in the Book of Azathoth, is he? Uh, I don't ask those types of questions, sir. I'm just salesman of antiques and antique accessories. Mm. It's not good. It is going to bring despair wherever you bring that book. Well, on one hand, it seems like there isn't much of a place where it could get any much more desperate than here in Siberia. But I uh, figured we should at least uh, off to take it off your hands. Maybe quiet down this uh, Darkling Witch of yours. But, uh... I suppose we're 
this book is as dangerous as you say. I might need to uh, have you use some of the uh, hoodoo voodoo that you were talking about in order to seal the book. I suppose that uh, I would be willing to trade in the entire rest of the library in return for that one volume. Oh, so you're only taking the dangerous one. <laughs> well, let's be real here. Uh, as much as I would like to take all of them, uh, I do understand that uh, I'm probably dealing with something that I'm not wholly familiar with. He says with an absolute straight face. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, so this Strickland is uh, mm, it's not good in anyone's going to going to anyone's hands but I suppose if he's if this is an, ant an antiquarian someone who is appreciative of these things then if he is in charge of it then... Perhaps he'll be okay for a while, but uh, time always catches up with these things. That is a problem, but perhaps a problem for not me right now, but me much later. Okay. Uh, let's see what we can do. You bring if you, you bring the book back, I will at least perform the ritual. It is not very portable, so there will be certain things you will have to do when you get it back to where you are taking it. But uh, these are uh, something that if. Uh, does uh, your uh, does your Strickland have any understanding of the uh, the nature of sorcery? Yeah. I'm sure he has the, all the available resources he needs in order to uh, manage such a find. All right. Well, I suppose uh, time shall tell. I suppose time shall tell. Very well. Of course, I would need to point out that uh, me retrieving this book and the rest of your library is going to require that uh, at least myself return here alive and uh, hail and hearty. I suppose Mitchell, too. Well, that's what one would think, yes. Yeah. Ideally. If you, if you return <laughs> and you're not, well, I mean... <laughs> You will, you will be returning different one way or the other, but uh, the question is just if you return under her influence or not. It well, I assume, too, you that, uh, <laughs> I assume that our goals are aligned and uh, you would not be so unkind as to hold back anything that might be useful to the success of this year venture. Hmm. I see what you're saying. Well, what do you, I think I see what you're saying. What do you, uh, are you looking for something? A protection of some kind? Well, I can... despite my very tax and stature, I am not a man of fighting in fists. So, uh, Mitchell here, uh, well, he's just one man along with Charlie. <laughs> he's just one man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charlie has been also still pretty quiet during this conversation, and but he does look like he's been kind of... He's got kind of a... Uh, since he's been talking about who's getting the book, he actually has kind of narrowed his eyes a little bit. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's looking kind of stone-faced right now. Hmm. Well... There are I mean, a, well, there is a means of making uh, 
uh, elder signs that uh, will help you at least a little bit. It's not a lot, but it you know, helps cushion the blow a little bit uh, when you encounter these things. Uh, the trouble is it takes a little while to make them. Uh, oh, you have one on you. Uh, yeah, I just kind of uh, look at the axe. You mean this thing? Yes. I make those for the lodge a while back. Takes a little time to inscribe the sign upon things. Uh, <clears throat> but that you have already. So, um, Hill's going to hold up the uh, music box. Mm. And is this your doing as well? Yes. Why a music box? Uh, it, uh, different uh, ways in which it will interact, you see, a little bit, but... Uh, it doesn't really matter what it is uh, that you have, as long as you uh, with the symbol on it, as long as you have it upon you. Uh, that one I made for someone who liked music. I am not much of a musician myself, unfortunately. Wonder the why this thing sounds so terrible. Yeah, uh, there is a sequence involved. It is. Uh, meant to be a last-ditch effort. Uh, yes. I would only advise, op if you are going to open it in the presence of things not of this world, I would recommend being very careful when you do so. Only as a last-ditch effort. There Sounds kind of a calm response to me. I'm sorry, what was that? The results could be unpredictable. Hmm, I see. Sounds like a little bit of a calm response to me. Uh, common response. Uh, yeah, when you're out in the air, want to make sure that your communications work and the other person's communications work. Ah, I cannot tell you how much radio has messed me up since they since they came along since that came along. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Uh, I I see what you're saying. It is not unlike that principle. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> I need to talk to that Italian again. Is he still alive? I gotta figure it out. Hold on. Hmm. It's hard to track when you're out here in the day and you know the night and day cycle is. Oh yes. All right, I suppose that's fair. And uh, lastly, what are these things for? He's just going to hold up the doll. Is there anything special about these, or did Lev just uh, lease me out of some rubles? Oh, those? <laughs> no, no, there's... <sighs> That's another of my attempts to uh, try to salvage a few of the souls that the witch has taken. Excuse me? Last year she takes, uh, she takes, uh, a number of, uh, some of the families, some of their, uh, their children, takes them for labor, takes them for, uh, fuel, takes them for materials, I, uh, unfortunately we were not able to make many of those, so we could not hold on to as many of them as we would have hoped, but you save who you can. Are you saying these things might work against whatever it is we might find out there? What I'm saying is, no, the dolls are meant our vessels for, uh, to try to... at least... hold on to the souls of those that she is forced into 
other things. Mm. So, yeah, if you were to bring them out, then they might uh, help with uh, anyone that she has still out there that has not been sent away or uh, transformed in some way. Well, trans uh, the ones that are still there that have been transformed, maybe, maybe. If uh, you happen to grab one, then they recognize themselves. You can uh, at least have a way to uh, put a buffer, buffer <clears throat> between the, their souls and her influence. I see. You've only well, I thought I got two here. We've only got six more. Hmm. I think I'm going to need the other six. Yeah. He gets up, and he goes into the back room, and uh, he lifts off this cover from the display case on the top shelf, and he opens it, and there are six more dolls in there. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure if these are going to work or not. But... Yeah, we can but try. And he hands them to you. All right. So, uh, I'm going to assume that <clears throat> Harold did actually carry a bag with him. And, yeah, sure. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pack those up. Well, not exactly a six shooter, but I guess it'll have to do. Just keep in mind, it's, uh, Specific to each soul, it is each one of those is a person. It is supposed to get them back in touch with their humanity, so it does have to be the right one. Yes. You have um, you have uh, six uh, lady dolls and two men dolls. Mm. Oh six, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like those odds. <laughs> one in eight. Yeah. All right. Well, mm. is there anything else that uh, we might need to know before we uh, venture down to the dirigible? Uh, let's see. No, no. I think as far as I, that uh, is the trouble. Is there is so much. <laughs> Uh, one learns a lot of these things over the centuries. It's very difficult to put it uh, all in one place in a nice, convenient package. But uh, nothing immediately comes to mind. Well, I suppose there's uh, nothing else that we can prepare ourselves with. Before we head down, is there some sort of magical sack that we'd put this uh, book of Azathoth in? Would it, would it not be wonderful if that were within my skills? Would it not? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, magical sacks are the province of fairy tales, as far as I have been able to tell. Really? Not like a, some sort of bag of holding? Be a portable hole? Uh, mm. I have heard I, I have heard there is this uh, cinema where you have the moving pictures and there are like thing, anime, uh, these uh, uh, moving little cartoons where you have someone who picks yes. up the hole and puts it in there. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, uh, mm. I don't have one of those. Shame. Mm, no. It's an interesting idea, though. It's a thing to try. Uh, there is... Uh, Mm, there are signs that you can use to move from one place to another, but that's... Uh, uh, if you're not experienced with their use, it can end up rather unpredictably. Hmm. Well, I guess that about covers it. So uh, he's going to sling his uh, pack up and uh, look over at Charlie and at uh, Mitchell. Is there anything else you guys will need? 
You still want that suit, Mitchell? <laughs> that's that's a cover story. It can wait. Yes, I was making a joke. Uh, yeah, I was I was attempting to uh, work to build on that. I don't, know. I don't think he's going to want to do it for you when he wakes up. Uh, I suppose I could make him forget. Actually, I'm probably going to make him forget. So, uh, yeah, man, yeah. If you want the suit before you go, sure. Assuming we're not running out of here yeah, once, provided, once yeah, looks all locked up. Don't need uh, to put any extra limbs on it or anything by the time they're done with you. <laughs> oh, what a kidder! Hmm. He says with a lot of uneasiness. <laughs> 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 So, yeah, I think, uh, yeah. All right. So I, I think this pretty much ends the scene. Yeah. Yeah. You see him. uh, Basically, he gets up and he he goes and he. You see him picking up as you're heading out of the shop. You see him picking up. Uh, and Tasha in a sort of fireman's carry and starting to carry him up the stairs, to, probably to put him to bed. Um, and so, yes, so that's your that's your visit with uh, with Doctor Barbashev at the uh, at the tailor's shop. <laughs> what are you doing now? Seems to be the case that our transportation's ready. We're like, what? 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 Enough time have passed that uh, that one guard yeah. has off work. Yeah, you've got you, yeah you've you've got uh, you, you've got a little time if you want it, but yeah, it won't take you, you can uh, you can hang out for a bit and then mm. and then head over there. Um, so in the meantime, um, Harold is going to start attaching or attaching those dolls to his long coat. <laughs> just out there, I mean, you know, because he figures he's not just going to be able to just hang. Over, hang. <laughs> <laughs> hold up one doll oh, and then, not. you know, hold up another doll and kind of hope and shuffle them. Why Maybe not get a bandolier of them? <laughs> bandolier, yeah, that's what exactly what he's going to do. <laughs> he's going to get a bandolier and store all eight all eight dolls on it. <laughs> you know the, you find what the right one is, throw like a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose there are any names actually stitched into any of the dolls by any chance? Um, no, no. Um, the only writing of any kind are those uh, are those symbols. Oh. Yeah, they... Can he poke his head back in and ask for the names of all the dolls? Ah, yeah. Um, yeah, Barbashev can uh, can can write the names down for you. Okay, it's not a problem. Um. I mean, it's, I mean it's either this or we're going to be riding a uh, Yeti, so... Yeah, yeah, that, that may be a problem as well. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, so... That's, that's those. <laughs> and... So you're writing, so you get the, the basically a list of eight names. Which... Um, I can, I can, I can run off for you at some point if you, if you want all eight names, um, but, uh, we'll, we'll deal with that shortly. Um, so you're, you're getting those together, making your, uh, making, making your bandolier o dolls. Uh, Mitchell, uh, anything else you're doing in the interim? Um... Not like, not likely. Mm-hmm. Maybe, hmm. I think it's possible if, the, if there's that one point where um, either waiting, uh, wherever, uh, or just going from place to place, um, it's just gonna be like, Charlie, Charlie, right? You've been mm-hmm. pretty darn quiet. Uh, if you got something to say, say it. I mean, I'm kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. Mm. 
it's kind of you have a little bit of a stake in this book as well yeah okay thing is if this book is as bad as he's saying I don't know what uh, I don't know what the hell Mr. Rothstein's gonna do with it when he gets his hands on it it's not good nothing good <laughs> But, you know, he'll be off Dottie's back at that point, so. Eh. Whatever he's going to do, he'll do it to other people. You're actually believing in all of this mumbo jumbo? Well, you know, you see a lot of things in your time, and. Uh, maybe it doesn't matter if, uh, if. Maybe it doesn't matter if I believe it or not. Uh, I mean. I don't know if you know. I don't know if you know uh, if you know Arnold Rothstein's um, reputation, but he's in addition to being a gambler, he has certain just sort of he gets certain obsessions. <clears throat> this one with this book is one of them. And uh, if it turns out to be nothing, the, which is I guess the best case scenario, then you know he'll make like he usually does. He'll send his uh, his guys to. Uh, you know, take it out on everybody else. If it turns out to be something, well, if it turns out to be nothing, he's going to send his guys to probably take, uh, you know, t uh, guys around to uh, cause me and cause me problems, cause Dottie problems. If it turns out to be something, he's going to yeah. cause problems for, you know, it could <laughs> cause problems for, you know, New York City. Yeah. But at the same time, like I said, rocking a hard place. Yeah, I see. Hmm. Um, I will say well, that uh, it is you. You might have uh, you guys might have heard of Ar depending on if you've spent time in New York City. Um, you might have heard of Arnold Rothstein, um, but it's uh, yeah. He he is as uh, he is a crime boss. Um, one of the uh, you know, among the people who work for him are there is a. Uh, an up-and-coming fellow, uh, uh, Char uh, Charles Luciano, um, who is uh, apparently is kind of starting to become more and more the face of the uh, the organization. Um, but, uh, the the kids call him Lucky. Hmm. Well. suppose we could try to determine whether or not there's a better plan. Rothstein is as bad as you say he is, and maybe you shouldn't have this book. Sure, point. And we are in Siberia, after all. I can't imagine it would be very difficult to challenge him to fake your deaths and drop you off at some place where you can start over. same time you know it's something hmm. I'll talk it over with her yeah well you got some time to decide yeah. of course that's assuming we all live or... yeah yeah that might be a yeah that's, that's kind of a thing all right <sighs> all right take the rides ready yeah. probably so yeah, you can uh, basically yeah. go forth and and fetch your bribed vehicle <laughs> <laughs> and drivers and drivers. Yeah, your, your I don't know how much a 1920s truck in the middle of Siberia is going to uh, cart, but uh... yeah, the, uh, the the terrain the the thing is because it's a military truck, it should be able to get it should be able to go off road, um, so it'll be okay. It's not ideal. Yeah. Because again, we're talking 1920s, so yes. Um, they hadn't really perfected how to make off-road vehicles at that time, but you know, if there are any vehicles that can do it, it's probably this one. Um, it's best bet. Yeah. So they're going to. So you're going to hop in, and your two uh, 
the two guards are going to come with you. And uh, you're going to pilot the truck out into the forest. So. <laughs> My question becomes, uh, are you going to try to take the truck as far, as close to it, to the, uh, the coordinates as you can? Up until we see something in our way, or, and then, uh, get close enough to it. Like, we're not gonna go right up to the thing, but, uh, uh to, up to whatever obstacle is there, but we'll, uh, park like a uh, half mile or so from uh, any vi any obstacles that make, th that make themselves known. Yeah. I, if there was a way to stop and um, be able to take a look at the um, site for actually venturing in, like some sort of um, a cliff with a lookout, perhaps, I think that would be wiser. Um, it was mentioned that uh, the witch had set up a fort around the dirigible so yeah so um you're gonna get a certain uh certain ways in um it's going to get a little darker because of the canopy of trees the trouble is that you're gonna get to the point that the trees the trees are gonna get too close together for you to drive the truck. Um, because the trees get a bit thicker the closer you get to the uh, the site. Okay. Um, so you do try to find a vantage point though, um, and you're all sort of looking around for one. Um, I think now. Should be the time for me to ask you to roll as you are doing this for a thing to try to figure figure this out. Um, I guess this could be a form of poking around, actually. Um, yeah. Um, it's you're going through the forest trying to look for a good vantage on this uh, on on this fort surrounding the crash site. Um, so whoever's whichever one of you who wishes to be on the lookout. Uh, poke around's uh, luck, I believe. It is luck. Um, yes, I see. So... Oh. Oh, ten. That is a not bad roll. Yeah, let me just pull the thing. Uh... Okay. Um, I think. Um, I think the best uh, course of action is kind of a clue to either what the, what the thing that we see is, or just uh, how to uh, get in and out, out successfully. Uh. So you want the. Uh... A clue. Up. One clue plus one yeah, ongoing when I heard upon? Yeah. Gotcha. All right. That would make sense. All right. Um, so, uh, you are going to find a, uh, a place as you get closer to sort of where the, sort of there, there are cliffs around, sort of the tops of cliffs around here that you're, that the, you know, you're on top of, so you're in a sort of little elevated area. Um, and uh, you get to a place where you can kind of see the ravine from where you are. That is uh, the major feature, land feature, that uh, Karpenko spoke of. Um, as you do. Sort of come around, and uh, so you're on kind of higher ground a little bit. And uh, you gaze out, and... Uh, you see something kind of unusual. It looks a lot like, and it's in the distance, 
So there is a place where the trees sort of in the you're looking in the direction of the uh, of the crash site. You kind of you kind of have to stand up on the roof of the truck to see this, or climb a tree. That's possible. But you're looking out, and uh, looks like a big kind of dome, igloo-looking thing. That's out there. Um, surrounding the crash site, and there's like a, a hole in the top? Like a round hole? On the top of the dome. And you can't easily see. You think that there are. Um, it's hard to see down in, in, into it. It's like some of the trees are covering the bottom. Um, but um, there's probably. Looks like there might be a couple ways in and out. Um, and there are things walking around that you can't make out from here. Inside or outside the dome? Does the dome see through? You cannot see through it, no. It's like you're looking at these uh, big blocks of ice. Yeah. Um, and the, the things are walking around outside the dome. And you can see three of them. Three things patrolling around it? Yeah. Well, that indeed is going to put a damper on... Uh, Trying to make an approach. Yeah. Bad ice. Yeah. Only yeah. we had some sort of way to generate a fire, to clean fuel, burn that thing down. Some kind of liquid. Kind of liquid. Oh. <laughs> 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 well. Maybe someday we'll find some, some such solution. Definitely won't find that in antiques or in antique accessories. No. Someday you'll find it. We can only hope. He's going to call back to the uh, two soldiers and point out the dome to them. It's like, I don't suppose you have anything that might uh, be a little bit more on the explosive side. You're looking at it. They're, they speak to each other in Russian for a minute. And they're sort of looking at it. One of them turns to you. You want to blow that up? I'll blow an entrance up at least. In case one of those are hard to get into. Yeah. I mean, it does look like there are a couple of ways in, but like I said, it's... Yeah, <laughs> big dumb. Um... <clears throat> He, uh, you know, they sort of chat a little bit. Assuming we did. That kind of thing does not come cheap. It uh, sort of changes the job from escort to, uh, something else entirely. This uh, becomes more of an operation. Is this an operation that two of you can pull off, or are you going to need to buy, bring in a couple of more hands? They sort of look at each other and they look at the dome. Like, looks like oh, there's only three of them. I don't know, like, as far as I can tell. Unfortunately, we're going to be about it. We're, we're, all, we're, we're going to be it right now. That's all we can do. We've got uh, a couple of fellows that are still on shift change. We can try figuring out if they want to join, but of course, that's. Because uh, uh, once they're done, then uh, they're going to be sh uh, shipping out with 
some of the prisoners. We bring them back and they are... Well, if we come back and not all of them are here, then some of them we might have to cover their uh, their jobs, and that would not be an ideal situation. Without I'm gonna appropriate compensation. A glance over their uh, armaments. Do they just have you know regular rifles? Yeah, well, yeah. With them, they've just got regular rifles. <clears throat> yeah, they did not bring explosives here because that's you know they. Yeah, okay. They yeah, that's fair. <laughs> All right. Um, this seems like a decent vantage point, though. Um, you guys, any good with those rifles? Is it something that you can snipe from? I suppose. Well, you want no offense, but uh, I, I need a little bit more of assurance than that if you want some more uh, compensation. Ah, well. That is I mean, I'm just it? saying that, uh, you know, if I were to die, um, it would be very challenging to get you the additional payment for a job well done. Uh, well, provided there is additional payment coming for a job well done, then yes, uh, we can certainly... That might improve our aim. <laughs> <laughs> I've got at least uh, another... Uh, double what we agreed upon initially I feel my aim getting better as we speak <laughs> you want us to take them out now how far away are we yeah, I, I'm actually, just trying probably, to yeah actually now that I'm thinking about it you're probably a little too far away but I mean he's probably talking about approaching and doing it well uh I think a mighty fine suggestion would be for you guys to uh, turn this truck around and make sure that it's uh, positioned for a reasonably uh, fast getaway. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to ask you guys to come with us down to the uh, igloo there. Um, need you both hale and hearty to drive this truck back. So, uh, but you know. Um, Riding a little bit of cover fire would certainly help our cause. That makes sense. And uh, as they're, you're saying this, the other guard sort of stiffens and like looks out. And uh, they kind of get into a sort of defensive position and uh, just sort of jump down off the off the, the roof of the truck. And around the truck to uh, and they're pointing at um, the woods nearby and uh, yeah I think uh, Mitchell would also at that point get in position yeah so also get in position and you're scanning the, 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 the tree line what's Harold doing? <laughs> Harold is going to um kind of step closer towards the truck for some cover and uh you know adjust his doll belier so it's like you can kind of hear sort of the crunching of snow and something that's like footfalls something very big is starting to move you see this silhouette in the in the forest sort of and it's not not too far from the edge so it's moving around And, uh, the guards are raising their guns, and they look as though they're going to try to take it out. Do you let them do it? Um, I'm going to place my hand on 
uh, one of their shoulders and told them to, uh, you know, basically signal to hold fire until we see what's going on. Um, do we have flashlights? You do have flashlights. Okay. Um, broad daylight, but you know, you're still... <laughs> oh, it's broad daylight. Okay, I forgot what time it... Oh, yeah. The sun never sets here, not this time of year. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I keep forgetting that. Sorry. Um, we get dusk, maybe, like one day a year. Well, no, you get. Uh, I mean, you, you get dusk eventually. It's just this. There's this month and a half when. Uh, yeah. When you get n- nothing but daylight. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's just that far north. Yeah. yeah. All right. So who out there is approaching? He's gonna call out. Oh, you're gonna call out. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Um, oh boy. So, oh God. The silhouette stops, and you hear this. And the trees are sort of parting, as it seems to be like just crashing now through them. And you're up, and then you see. This beast erupt from the tree line. It is about seven, maybe seven and a half feet tall. It's covered in white hair. And it looks like it has almost faceted eyes and a mouth that is circular with, looks like a circular saw blade and big claws and I need to ask the both of you to make sanity rolls this is acting under pressure Elkadirk. um and here's where we all die <laughs> yep yeah. uh yep I'm not good at reason oh son of a gun all right Oh boy. Yeah. Charlie, who is here with you as well and just raising his gun, is is suitably shocked. Um, he's like really taken aback by this. The soldiers are kind of taken aback by this. Um, let's see. So, so you know, for uh, you, you see, you're gonna take one less shock. Let me see the. Uh, let me check the scale here as to is this you know the horror level of the thing, what you're seeing. Um, there we go. Let's see. There we go. Oh, yes, that's... Ah, they put it later in the book. Okay. Um... Yeah... Yeah, this is going to be um, two shock uh, for this. Um, so let me, uh, let me go ahead again and pull up the what happens to your rules for this. So, um, so Harold, uh, you're actually going to take only one shock, and it's going to be temporary to the scene because you're carrying an elder sign. Um, and Mitchell. Uh, you are also only going to take one temporary shock uh, for this uh, for the duration of the scene, since you are also carrying an elder sign. Um, ah, yes. But you are going to be at minus one forward. So okay. your next roll is going to be at minus one. Um, so this is kind of startling. Uh, you are still going to need to make damage your, 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 the damage moves here, so uh, this is going to be uh, ten plus, uh, it's a, sorry, a 2d6 plus one. Both of us? Yes. Yes. Rolling so high. <laughs> oh, I guess this is the take a powerful blow. I guess. Let's see damage moves. So I get to pick one uh, from table or two from the from the from the bigger list. Let's see. So. Um. 
So as you are, um, the dolls are attached to your coat, yes? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to choose, for you, I'm going to choose two from the, from the list here. Um, so as you're sort of fumbling for one of them, uh, you kind of trip and, uh, you kind of are, 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 are trip and you're stumbling. Um, as you see this thing, you're taken aback, you kind of stagger back for a moment, and you're pulling this thing, and it kind of, uh, is, uh, as, as you sort of had, uh, yank one of the dolls off, and it goes flying out of your hand and off the edge of the ravine. And then you, t you, you tumble, uh, you tumble sideways down onto the ground, so you have lost your footing as well. Um... Dang it, Harold! For, uh, for Mitchell... Um... Let's see. Yeah, this is, uh, so you're going to see this thing, and uh, you're going to start, uh, well, let's see. Mm, no, this is different from the thing that you, uh, you encountered, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to yeah, give you, different. I'm not going to give you flashbacks yet. Um, not this time. So I think I'm going to, let's see. Yeah, uh, I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say that it is worse than it seems. As this thing is charging, and it looks like it's charging directly for you, uh, so you're gonna take one additional uh, shock. Uh, okay. So you're gonna be at two shock, um, and which so that's uh, kind of where you are with that. Um, you know, I wish this uh, I wish this uh, cheat sheet had certain things on it that it does not have. Um, but no worries, I know where the uh, I know roughly where they are in the book now. Uh, so yes, you go from startled to shocked, basically, is your current uh, your current state. Um, so uh, this thing. So what are your immediate reactions as this thing barrels out of the out of the forest? Uh. I I think the missile's supposed to be like, yeah, shit, pow. Start firing, firing. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, if you need me to roll um, resort to violence, I can, but yeah. I think um, what we're going to do is, yes, go ahead and uh, yeah, roll. Res yeah, you're, re you're definitely resorting to violence here. Yeah. So uh, I think that's, uh, unless you're trying to scare it, in which case you're threatening. Nah. Uh, um, let me okay. see. Resort to violence. Um, let's see. So it's here somewhere. To... I can never remember. Um, okay. So... Um, I think uh, I want to uh, impress this mayor friend, and then. Um, I think suffer a little harm at this point. Okay. So if it does, uh, hit back. So you want to uh, impress, dismay, or frighten, and uh, suffer a little harm. So minus one harm from what's about to happen to you. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so oh. Um, nine, yeah. So you. You're, so what's your yeah. weapons damage? Uh, I believe this is, is the. Uh, I forget whether it was a rifle or shotgun, uh, and it doesn't. It also doesn't say what harm it is, but we could just say, for the sake of it, that does the same. Yeah, it doesn't say what the harm of either of mine are, but like. Uh, That's okay, I got it here. Weapon. Yeah. Um, dee -dee -dee -dee. Uh, so hunting rifle is two harm. Sawed off shotgun is three harm. Um, is your, uh, you said it's a, it's a rifle? Uh, yeah, we could say that. Well, it's either, it's either like a rifle or a shotgun. Yeah, I think, um, I think we could, it makes more sense for it to be a shotgun, because this is, like, uh, personal work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's a shotgun. Yeah. Um, it is two-handed, it is also messy, but you can hit things at medium range. Uh, it is, it does three harm. Okay. Um, so... You blast this thing, um, 
and it is still kind of lunging toward you. Um, and it is going to kind of come up as, you know, it's sort of charging, you know, barreling toward you and coming forward with its claws. Um, and it will do... He's once again looking for the damage scale. Oh, that's oh, I know where that is. Unfortunately, so does the... Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um... Yeah. So it's going to do one harm to you, uh, one physical harm. Mm. Um, and so once again, you've suffered yes. damage. So I need you to uh, roll uh, 2d12 plus one. I mean, uh, even if this is after the several har suffer little harm, I also take two less harm. Yeah. One is from a piece of armor, and another is from. Oh, that's right. From okay, I so you're fine, actually. Yeah, yeah it was going like, to be too... just like knock back or whatever. Yeah, it was going to be two harm, but it's uh, but the the. The result meant it was my, it was one less harm, um, and yeah. so if you've already if you've got armor as well, then that helps you. So it yeah. knocks you back. Um, as you're as you're staggering back, and I'm going to use the uh, the hold that I have against you to say that you are now teetering on the uh, on the edge of the ravine, and you are about to lose your footing. Okay. And uh, that is uh, that is where, and uh, I need you to make a roll here to uh, act under pressure. That's great. I'm trying to... Re reason. Yeah. My favorite. Not fall off. Excellent. You just gotta say you're not good at it. You grab hold of the edge of the, uh... You grab hold of the edge of the ravine, uh, as you do, uh, as you do fall, as you do fall into it. And you're now clinging to the edge. And that is where we're going to take our break. We will be back <laughs> in a few minutes. <laughs> See you soon. Enjoy this cliffhanger. Enjoy this literal
we have returned. And, uh... Let's see, I believe Mitchell is dangling from the edge of a cliff. And, uh... Harold, you see this, um... This, this beast has knocked into him and is now kind of uh, trying to trying to surge forward to look for him on the on the cliff's edge uh, meanwhile uh, the soldiers are are, uh, are you know they're they're are firing at him or they're preparing to fire at him um, are you doing anything um. <clears throat> <laughs> this is gonna sound so stupid. Uh, I don't suppose you have a name. Is it maybe? I don't know. He'll he'll throw out one of the names that. Oh, uh, I forgot to give the give you a list of names. Um, so I don't suppose it's Rasputin, Yoter, maybe. Oh my god. Omega Red. I'm sorry. All the Russian people I know are X Men. I'm going to uh, uh oh 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 for for good. I'm gonna send you. This link now, <laughs> <laughs> so that you can just make use of it this way. That there, that way, <laughs> that'll that'll become much easier. <laughs> okay. Um. No. Uh, God, I don't. How am I going to pronounce any of these names? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um. But so you 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 call out one of the names. Um. <laughs> Are you Liz Love Gordy Stepanovich? See, that's even funnier. Because um, <laughs> it works with your character. Yeah, I know, right? Um, but, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess I, uh, I guess you're trying to convince them to uh, to, to not kill everyone. Um, so, yeah, go ahead and roll convince for me. Roll plus affinity. <laughs> this, is, this is so absurd. I don't know why my games with you always end in some form of absurdity. I don't know why. I can't imagine. <laughs> I, it's, I, I think it's like I have a brand or something. I don't uh, know. Maybe? <laughs> or I do. All right, give me give me a second, because my cat just stepped on my keyboard and closed. Oh, oh. no! <laughs> We're doing so well in the show, I, I tell you. Um. Uh. Okay, now she looks like she wants to jump. Not great. So, uh, I mean, if the cat right. wants to roll, you can you can let her roll. Yeah. Well, no, she closed my my page, so I don't know. Mm. Well, that gamery is. I don't know what it is. With... Away from you know feeding. She's been fed already. Well, so yeah, I but I mean, to a cat, that's that that that's meaningless. Five minutes later. You're making this really difficult, Mayday. You said affinity, right? Yes. Oh, look at that. Okay. Oh, balls. <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> this game is cursed. Cursed. Well, so here's the good news. Uh, good news is you get its attention. <laughs> And so it's charging at you, and I need you to act under pressure to attempt to uh, get out of its way. If you do not wish to be clawed. Okay, that's better. Um, so you flinch, hesitate, cave, or stall. <laughs> not too much better. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to say... Uh, you probably... You probably hesitate just a moment too long. Great. As it uh, as it comes for you, um, and uh, you do. You, it wasn't a complete. It was not. A, it, it was a hit on there. So you're gonna. You're not. You're not gonna take full damage from it. Um, but it's going to do uh, one damage to you as it sort of rakes the uh, rakes your side with its claw. Um, do you have uh, Do you have any armor? No. Okay, so it okay. rakes into your side with its claw, and you take one harm. Um, and at that point, uh, 
You do manage to get out of the way, and the moment you, you're clear, the soldiers open fire on it. Um, the soldiers and Charlie, and they, they down it, because it was already bleeding <laughs> from, uh, from Mitchell's shot. So it then, it, you know, it collapses to the ground. Oh, boy. And, uh, you have that, and then you have Mitchell dangling on the edge of, of the cliff. No, yeah. right. I suppose we should help him. <laughs> yeah, like after a second of gaze, right? He just like starts to scramble up. So they'll come up and they'll help you help you get up. And you, uh, yeah. you get up over the cliff's edge and see a dead yeti. Mm. A yeti. <laughs> well, that was very exciting. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, if you want us to lay down cover fire, you should probably get. We should probably get going now. They'll have been alerted. Yeah. Then we. Then I think we uh, get in the truck and yeah. Um. Yeah, and as you kind of. <coughs> so. Oh yeah, that's right. You got to turn the truck around so that it'll be. Ah uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We gotta make like a. <laughs> So one of the soldiers will stay behind to do that, and the other one and Charlie will come with you. Um, and you approach the, uh, the the fort, as it were. Let me see. I think. Mm -hmm. Huh. What are both? If one of one or if we're looking at this, uh, what are both of us might be able to um, puzzle things out. Uh, it's a couple of questions in there might be able to help. I just kind of look at it. Uh, try to work on some sort of strategy. All right. So you're going to stop and do that somewhere. Yeah. Just like leaning against the truck, uh, kind of thinking on it. Oh, okay. All right, uh, yeah. Um, uh, you may certainly uh, do that. I will tell you, though, that um, that will take a, a tiny bit of time. Yeah. Just thinking on it. Yeah. All right. Well, plus reason, which we all love. Yep. Excellent. So. Uh, yeah. Nothing on this. I think you just hold one. Oh, yes. Or whatever. Um... <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not gonna do this immediately, but um, this uh, this will kick in and this will kick in in just a moment. Um, so just like shaking his head in frustration, and then walk back in. Walk yeah, back. yeah. You you basically are trying to trying to figure out sort of the best strategy, and it just seems as though you don't know enough yet to really figure out exactly what's going to happen. I mean, it's, there are, as best you can tell, you think there are two entrances. You think there's one closer to this side and one on the opposite side. Uh, you figured out that much, so if you want to try to get in through there, there's that. Um, they're, they, they probably heard the gunshots. Yeah. It's a bit distant, but uh, mm. they might have heard the gunshots. I think we're just going to have to move to the entrance that has the best clear line of sight from wherever the uh, soldiers are probably up or on. Yeah. Probably okay. the closer one. Yeah, the soldiers guessing. will approach. They'll they'll help, you know, like I said, lay down cover fire for you, but, you know, you're going to have to... They're not going to go into the igloo. Um, nah. So, my, uh, my question, and this is kind of the sort of standard RPG question one asks, um... And the role is going to be the same, actually, regardless of which option you take, but this helps me know how this is going to be flavored. Are you going quickly or quietly? <clears throat> I think we're just going to have to go quickly at this point. I mean, yeah. the gunshots and, uh, you know. All right. There's no <laughs> screwing around at this point. It is time for the both of you to act under pressure. 
Hooray! Excellent. Excellent. Even better. Excellent. I forgot to say that bad reason. Oh. Yes. Um, one thing that I just thought of that is absolutely unrelated to this, but that I was just looking through, uh, Wait a just a bit of a reminder, is that earlier I see Anino, you rolled double sixes at some point. Um, oh, yeah, I did. So you actually are going to get a point of lore. Uh, and I think... It was a damage roll, but I'm still going to give you a point of lore. Yeah, let, let me look at things. the... Uh... <laughs> We need all the help we can get at this Absolutely. point. So. I also have a move where uh, whenever I'm in a dangerous situation, I also gain a point of lore. Ah. Uh, max max one per scene, but uh, yeah. You, you have been in a dangerous situation. Yep. <laughs> I think I think this qualifies as a being being knocked off the edge of a cliff, I think qualify by a Yeti, I think does qualify as a dangerous situation. Yes. Um... Okay. So, uh, as you are proceeding, uh, you're trying to get through quickly, uh, you will note that it seems like uh, you, you hear, um, as, as you're proceeding through the forest, you think you hear someone go, uh, crash, something crashing through the under, uh, underbrush up ahead? Um, and that I think will be when you see this large white blur barrel into Mitchell from the side. Ah! <laughs> oh. And uh, it's uh, yeah, no, this is uh, this is going to uh, this this does three harm, which uh, we will subtract two, so it'll do one harm. Where are you yep. at harm-wise right now? Physical uh, harm. That's the uh, only one that's only taken. One so far? Okay, good. Yeah. All right. So yeah, you take you take one harm. So you're uh, you're kind of uh, you're kind of bleeding a bit. Um, and uh, we can say actually, Harold took one harm as well, physical harm earlier. Yes. I did. Yes. One thing about the rules is that the, you can say, did you take during that thinking time? You could have they could have bandaged you up. Um, which actually would, uh, if I if I read the rules right, it does remove that harm. Oh, uh, since that's that's like okay. one minor thing they can do. Uh, only while you don't have a lot of harm can they take off a harm. Um, but they can't. But that's like the 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 only time you can do that during this. I, I think during this session. Um, yeah, I know. But uh, they, but you know, we did that. Um, so uh, yeah, this the this thing now. Has uh, grabbed hold is basically grabbed hold of Mitchell and has slammed him into a tree. Uh, this is like the uh, this is a, a yeti-like thing, like the other one that you saw. Um, the uh, the others who are up ahead, you know, immediately turn or, or you know, are kind of spread out. They turn around. They're they're getting ready to. You know, they're turning their guns. Uh, Harold, are you doing anything? Uh, yeah. So he's gonna try his luck again. Say, I don't know if that's a very good thing for you to do, young man. Your Bashkin Maxim Romanovic. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's convince, gonna con convince the Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that sounds very convincing. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> it uh let's see what happens um yeah you uh as you do this uh it seems it just sort of like <laughs> snarls and continues to like uh try to uh so like comes pulls pulls its uh, hand back uh as you uh as it does you hear crashing and it sounds like there's uh, it sounds like there's another one coming from up ahead um, meanwhile, though, Mitchell, you've got a Yeti on you, uh, that is about to be fired upon, uh, yep. possibly, but, uh, in the meantime, looks like it might be trying to maybe decapitate you? Not sure. What are you doing? Um, 
probably going to... Um, I think at this point I'm going to... Uh, if we can say that I uh, also heard the names... Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, you've got the names. Yeah. I was going to say... Uh, listen, Roja. Roja Stanislavovich. And then I'm also going to try and convince uh, this Yeti. Yes, with... convince the Yeti. Convince the Yeti! Everyone's favorite game, convince the Yeti. <laughs> uh... Yeah. <laughs> yep. Claws to the chest. Um, it's uh, now. Luckily, you are still uh, you're still somewhat armored. Yeah, um, I'm still tough. So it's uh, it, that's going to be another harm. Okay. Um, as it is, uh, so it doesn't quite hit any vital organs. It kind of gets you in the shoulder, actually. Yeah. Um, as this is going. Um, and uh, this is the point at which uh, the soldiers once again uh, and, and Charlie open fire on it. Um, well, the soldiers do. Uh, Charlie begins to and then is uh, toppled to the ground as another white blur assaults him. And uh, he is now fighting. He is now also fighting a Yeti. Um... Uh, Harold, are you doing? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, th so let's see. The two soldiers will do. They'll, they'll do approximately. Uh, they've got rifles, so they're going to do two harm apiece. Um, so yeah, they're shooting at this thing, and it's probably. Um, it looks so. It looks like it might drop in a moment. Uh, and then this other one is uh, tussling with Charlie. What are you doing, Harold? Uh, he's just going to start rattling off the names and seeing if anyone would actually pay attention to him, because. You know, yeah, he invested not... very heavily in these dolls, and is not. And by gone it, he's going to make sure they work. By all means, I am enjoying this downward spiral. Keep going. Yes. Convince that Yeti. Oh my God. What? <laughs> <laughs> I have never rolled this bad. I, I swear. Like, <laughs> I'd like to thank Eric Volgaris for visiting my game this evening. Um. <laughs> I, I, I think this is I'm just on. karma catching up to me from the Dungeon World game, which I hit every roll. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Eric, do this so and, Eric, and Eric taketh away. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> okay. So, let's see. <laughs> How much worse can this get? Uh... <laughs> can it? <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> um so yeah, uh God. Uh in, in frustration he's going to yell out, "My god, why won't anyone listen to the Americans?" <laughs> okay. Trying to be reasonable people here. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Well, no, no. You say that, oh. and then you hear something. Oh, God. You hear a voice. It's kind of muffled. I will listen to you. Be are you the witch? Produce your mirror and I will... And let's have a chat. Do that and I will call them off. That doesn't sound like a very good deal to me. <laughs> Speaking in all my years as a salesman. Something in your... Something Couldn't in your... we just parlay for a bit? Something in your bag is vibrating. It's very strange. But you hear this sort of buzzing type coming from your bag. Mitchell, uh, while, while, whilst Harold's puzzling this over, um, you are uh, tussling with a yeti that is, is bleeding profusely. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, I think... 
Mitchell, Mitchell's just gonna say, "God dang it, Yeti!" And then he's just gonna put the uh, shotgun under its like whatever is left of a chin, and then. Excellent. Um, please do some damage. All right, roll that might. Resort to violence. Okay. Yeah. So you t- you choose two. Two. And I think uh good take definite hold and I think at this point the only one that makes sense is well I think I'm gonna just gonna suffer terrible harm just in case. I mean okay. not 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 suffer terrible harm, inflict terrible harm. Inflict terrible harm and what are you trying to take definite uh, hold of? It's life. Ah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, so yeah, you uh, yeah, we'll 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 go with that for for now, because uh, you do you you're, you're up under its chin, so <laughs> you blow this thing's head off. Um, and uh, let me actually let's see here. Yeah, you blow this thing's head off, and it drops to the ground. Um, in the meantime, uh, a soldier at the same time is shooting at it, and then the other soldier is shooting at the one on Charlie. Charlie is shooting at the one on top of it. Um, and, uh, is trying to, on, on top of him. Uh, what's, uh, what's Harold doing now? Are there any more Yeti coming? Uh, no, no, this would be all the Yeti currently, uh, uh in your vicinity. All right, so... If you would like more, I can produce more, obviously. It's, you know, well, no, you need, I... You need but ask, and I'll be happy to throw more Yeti at you. I'm pretty sure you're going to throw more Yeti at us anyway, so... <laughs> I'm <know>. very giving. <laughs> you are indeed, sir. There's still one on account for, at least. <laughs> yeah, I guess there is. Um... So, Harold is just going to hold out the music box, and uh, he's not going to open it yet, but he's just going to hold it out. I'm like, so you've lost at least uh, two Yeti so far. I think the third is on its way. I don't suppose you'd just be willing to talk. I just really want the book. Can we work something out here? So she doesn't say anything. Um... So they don't say anything. Um, but uh, so, but uh, to 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 to, uh, to what you're saying is sort of. It's, but you can sense that she's kind of listening, thinking. What's Mitchell doing? Uh, I think I'm just gonna try and get the this yeti off of me, and then uh, begin to uh, finish off the one on Charlie. Yeah, this yeti is down. So you're, okay. You know, you're, All right. Um, I think I'm just going to like. Keep my gun leveled and on the lookout for any more. Uh, I mean, sorry, the Yeti that was on you is down. Uh, oh, do, yeah. Do you want, do, there's still one on Charlie. Do you want to... Yeah, yeah, I, I'm just going to go in uh fire at that. Excellent. Um, yeah. uh, resort to violence. Oh, <sighs> dear. Okay. So, um, yeah. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Actually, uh, yes. Uh, let me just double check my uh, lore move here. Uh, focused. You have the ability to narrow your attention to a given task at hand, giving it your all. You it's been a point of lore to add plus one to any roll. And it doesn't say whether I have to do it before, but yeah, if okay. so, yeah. So yeah, just gonna take, uh, move that to a seven, and I'm going to. Take definite hold, but in this case, it's more either through positioning myself or just how I aim that I'm not going to hit Charlie. Gotcha. And then, okay. uh, I think at this point, I might have to do suffer, no, yeah, inflict terrible harm. All right, you managed to, uh, yeah. So that's enough to take it out, since you know this is a shotgun. You're doing like four harm with this thing. Uh, if yeah. you're if you're in, you know, three harm and then plus the one. Um, right. Yeah, so you uh, you get it in the back because it sort of is rearing up uh, to try to d- deliver a death blow, um, and 
it falls down. Charlie is injured. Um, he is uh, he's hurt pretty badly. It's looking uh, at this point. He's like lying on the ground, and he's bleeding profusely. Uh, yeah, I think this kind of uh, he's gonna try to um, think maybe like try to warm out a layer, but not like just get take uh, any like scarf or anything and try to stop the bleeding as much as he can, and then begin to talk to him and keep talking. Yeah. So the soldier's helping, and he's like, "Guy, yeah, fella, not supposed to come up on a fella like that." Liable to get yourself, liable to get themselves hurt. Uh. Yeah. Poor sportsmanship. Um, so the soldier's kind of bandaging him up. Um, he is. He looks like he is not going to be able to continue. He's he, uh, he's going to live. Um, but he's probably you're probably going to have to leave him here for right now. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, and uh, the other soldier, one one of the soldiers can help him back to the truck once they're done laying down cover fire for you. Um, yeah, probably going to help, help him to the truck before we, uh, before heading back to where, uh, Harold yeah. is. Uh, no, we're, we're, you shouldn't double back. I think we just need to keep pressing. Right. I just gotta help him to the truck then. Well, the truck's um, kind of a distance away, so I mean, they can, Oh. Yeah, you know, Charlie can, can hang here for a, a little bit, pre presuming there are no more Yeti. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's just one of those questions, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, um, they can, you know, they're going to go ahead and, uh, but yeah, they, they can come up. They, they, at the very least, they can, you're not very far from the edge of the clearing now, so, um, yeah, they, you can finish this part and then they'll take care of Charlie. Yeah, sounds good. All right. So... You approach the uh, the clearing, presumably. Do you approach the clearing, or are you sort of, sort of stopping there? And for a penny. <laughs> All right. You approach the clearing. You see this big igloo-looking thing. It's got an op a hole, sort of a doorway in the front. Um, there is right now... Um, looks like there is maybe, as you sort of sit there and you watch it for a moment, it looks like there is one more Yeti that's still standing outside. Um... Uh, so, as, as they're looking, as they're, as they're looking. It doesn't look like it's seen you yet. Uh, yeah, if we can uh, make our way quietly through the entrance without uh, tipping off the Yeti. Okay. Um. Well, th yeah, this one, yeah. So, yeah. So you're gonna try to try to sneak in. So I think, uh, do you want to, what do you tell the soldiers to do? Uh, just. So we're going to just tell the soldiers to, um, be alert and point out the Yeti. Yeah, they see um, setting themselves. Look, I don't really, th she knows we're here. Uh, even if we don't get the Yeti now. It's going to try to get us when we get the book and try to leave the igloo, so... Not a pretty big fan of violence. In fact, I... Kind of feeling a little green looking at all this blood and dead... White monkeys. Gorillas. Whatever these things are. Uh... Listen, Witch, I know you're... Around, and you can hear us talking. Can't we just parlay? Roll to convince. Ooh. Oh, finally, something. Jesus. Very well. Very well. Come inside, and we will talk. All right. Mitchell, you're with me. Uh, 
And uh, we'll, we'll, I'm just going to start heading on in. All right. Let's try this one. You, uh, you enter. The, uh, you walk past and the Eddie does not move to stop you. The area that you're entering, it's sort of, uh, it's not exactly, I wouldn't call it cavernous, it's not quite that big. It's fairly big. So, around the walls and throughout this big sort of chamber that you're entering are these blocks of ice uh, that look like they've been highly polished as you're entering you can kind of see somewhere near the middle of the chamber you can see it's a little bright when you come in because these blocks of ice in the walls and kind of standing around and in sort of just in odd places in the middle of the chamber uh, are very highly reflective. The light of the sun is beaming down through the hole in the roof and catching on all of these mirrors that are arrayed throughout <coughs> this, uh, this, this fort, as it were. Focusing on this mound of ice that's actually a little sunken. It's below the surface of the, uh, the it's below the floor, the surface of the forest floor. Um, so it looks like there was some digging involved getting down there a little bit. But it's this mound sort of pokes up, and you haven't approached it yet, so you can't yet see much about it. Beyond it, off to the side, still within this chamber, uh, are what looks like the remains of a downed dirigible. It's uh, you know you see basically the, I mean so the 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 airbag of course is you know long gone. But you see kind of some of the wireframe left for it. Uh, just sort of coming, looping around. And you see sort of this area is just sort of sitting there is where it landed, kind of partially in the uh, halfway, in the ground, halfway out, um, is this big um, the cabin, the cabin, the deck of the thing. Um with, uh, looks like, probably a couple of entrances to it. As you step inside, maybe it's out of the corner of your eye, you're not sure, but it looks like in some of the mirrors you see, like, this shadow moving. So, realization about how screwed they are is going to sort of cross his features, and uh, you know, I can't help but uh, point out that there are lots and lots of mirrors here, and uh, we were sort of warned not to be dealing with any mirrors at all when it comes to uh, talking with the witch. Uh, Admittedly, this is not going to be a very good sale, I imagine. But, uh, nevertheless, if you would mind at least giving me a better name to call you, I think which is very, very, uh, negative in connotation. And, uh, from all lore that I've heard from various village people, They've always noted that the witch was actually a very wise woman who uh, 
took care of this land. Hmm. But are we gonna help at all? Hang on just a second. Call me Thalkrish. Now that's certainly a name that I would attribute to a very wise woman. <laughs> Pleasure <laughs> to meet you, Thalkrish. I am not. As you, I am not a, a woman as you would understand me. I merely inhabit this form for now. What do you wish, Harold Hill? Well, I suppose I don't really need to go through with much introductions if you already know my name and my business as well as my associate here, uh, Mr. Mitchell McCready. See, he's uh, sort of floating around some of, the mir some of the mirrors in the middle. It seems to be getting closer. He's hopping back and forth from the, the ones that are out in the, in the chamber. I know we're visitors to this land. Very far away from our continent that we call America. But uh, we are here uh, on a bit of a business venture. Now, uh, we were asked and hired to retrieve a certain library of books, which uh, you seem to have uh, under your care. Um, and they seem to be causing a lot of trouble for everybody. So uh, with that good old fashioned American know-how and drive, we... Uh, I, I'd like to resolve this issue, this conflict, without much uh, further harm to the people of that village and uh, to you and yours out here in the vast forests of the Siberian Arctic. Yeah. And as you uh, note, sort of, that uh, you're kind of in this big sort of chamber with sort of in shadowed in some areas. Goes, Let me have a look at you. Step into the light. He's gonna hesitate for a second. Um Alright, I suppose that's fair. Yeah, Mitchell also accidentally uh like just steps forward. Uh, so Hank is going to push him back a little bit and just be like, no, uh, if I go crazy, I need you to take that shotgun and uh, put a bullet in me. Fair. So, Harold steps into the line. Harold's going to step forward because he's going to negotiate in good faith. As you get closer to the middle of the chamber, um... Mitchell, are you coming up sort of behind him, or are you staying back? Uh, I'm going to follow Wards and stay back. You're going to follow for a bit and stay back? Is that what you... Uh, I'm uh, following what uh, he told me. And, oh, follow what he told you. Okay, so, you're not really. so, Harold, you more see this than Mitchell does. Um, <clears throat> so, you can kind of get a better glimpse of the, the sort of mound in the middle of the, the mound of ice. Sure. And... You note a couple of things as you are doing this. Um, you note that there is a. Uh, you note a few things. One is that the the ice is that that in the ice there are these figures, you can't quite see them clearly, 
Um, but they look like they're each about maybe six-ish feet tall. Frozen. You see them more. You see them more. Uh, you see them more kind of more shadowed than you can see the actually what they look like. It's more you're sort of seeing their the shadows of them. Um, but you can make out roughly that they're they're like about six feet tall. They are maybe humanoid, but they look like they're probably not human. Because it looks like they've got... You're having trouble finding their heads? Um, and they have, you think, wings? That look like big insect wings, maybe? The other thing you note is that since this is where the sun is beaming, is reflected right down into the middle of this, that the ice is melting. Slowly. This is where there are the most mirrors, this area around the center of the chamber. And as the shadow flits closer, and one looms pretty close to where you are, as this, this one shadow does loom closer, I need you to act under pressure to avoid looking into the eyes of the Darkling Witch. Is that a nine? That's a nine. All right. Do, 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 do. Do you flinch, hesitate, cave, or stall? So I'm going to say you kind of flinch a bit. It's still a hit, but... What does Harold want more than anything else in this world? be back home in Texas right now. Um, and preferably wealthy. So, you um, are not sure. You think you catch just a glimpse, very briefly, of this pair of golden eyes that appear in the shadow. And then, quite suddenly, you are sitting in a, uh, a very, you're in a very comfortable sitting room, actually. Um, and there's a, there's a big window, and you can see the Texas Plains out, outside of it. It's uh, it's actually very warm now. You were cold until you until this moment, but now you're feeling pretty warm. A uh, and there's as far as you can tell, there are this room is pretty big. It's this is like maybe also this may be kind of like one of those Frank Lloyd Wright type houses. Um, Although I can't remember when Frank Lloyd Wright was, so this may be before that. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, yeah, big. there's like a big round table, sort of uh, table. There's a big fireplace that's not currently in use. Um, and you see this, 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 you're on this kind of estate, looks like. The, there are multiple cars outside that you can see through the window. And, uh, you note you were dressed in a suit better than your finest suit. And you note that a woman wearing a cloak 
with seems to or something looks kind of like a woman wearing a cloak comes from around the corner uh, do you look at her no okay <laughs> <laughs> she sits across from you there's these big sort of couches it's like uh, you have, you're, you're on a couch on one side and there's a couch on the other side of the table <clears throat> Do you want this? Uh, maybe I do. Uh, I don't think this is very fair in terms of uh, negotiating in good faith. And that is what we are doing. I am offering you something and I am showing you what it is I am offering sorry but this doesn't really seem real and uh, I am by all means a practical and pragmatic man uh, uh, this I is sell not, it but it is something you can obtain Well, it looks very pretty, but uh, what's the catch here? Well, I have found that my interests will soon be expanding, as you put it, in your vernacular. As my brethren will soon be awake finally after all this time we will be departing this place and it seems to us that once they are Similarly enlightened. No, actually, are they enlightened already? It's a good question. Um, yes, they are. They will be similarly enlightened as this uh, this vessel has been, and once. We, if they are awake and well, our interests shall move further afield. You are here for an item that is very dear to us, but we feel that our greatest opportunity to expand into uh, <laughs> greater markets, as you would put it, would come if you complete your deal and ensure that the Book of Our Sultan reaches your continent. There is much we could do with the likes of the one who shall receive it. All we ask is that you write your name in it. I'm going to cut to Mitchell whilst you're, whilst this is uh, being contemplated. <coughs> Mitchell, uh, Harold has stepped into the ring of light, sort of surrounding the uh, the center of the chamber, and he's just stopped moving. Yeah, I presume he's like staring at a mirror and being entranced or something like that. 
Um, you're not sure. It's he's not looking directly at Amir. Do you get close enough to see the direction he's looking at? Actually, uh, probably. I think at this point, if the plan is to like step forward, and if he's seems so like just wave in front of the face, I kind of shove him okay, a little bit. Okay, so you get close, and you're, you're preparing to do that. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's looking directly at a mirror. Hmm. However, as you get closer, you see, as it was described earlier, this mound in the center with these rather familiar-looking creatures inside the ice. I, I need you to make a sanity roll, please. All right, and would this be a roll uh, still in actual nerve pressure? Yes, it is. All right. Okay. That's a seven. All right. This is, uh, these are creatures very much like the ones you saw before. Back in yes. the war. And, uh, <clears throat> let's see. So, you're going to take, um, you're going to take one shock. Okay. You've seen these before, uh, so I'm only doing, I was, I would only be doing two shock to you in any case. Um, yeah. And actually, you are, uh, which once again will, uh, will degrade once you're out of this scene because you're carrying an Elder Sign. But at the moment... Yeah, uh, how, how are you for shock at the moment, by the way? Um, I might have forgotten to um, bring that one down, so... Uh, so are you all the way like, up to Disturbed, or are you just down to Shocked, I think is... Um, I think if the stuff at the cliff and the stuff down here counts as a separate scene, then I think it would have been back down to two, I think. To two? Okay. So, so still, uh, so you're, so you're, yeah, so you're still, so you're shocked. Okay, all right. So yeah. yeah. Um, so disturbed is uh, narratively fitting, at least. Yes. If not mechanically. Also, uh, just because once again, bookkeeping. Um, how wounded were you? Um, I got uh, the only harm I've I've gotten is the uh, two harm uh, back outside the fort. Okay. Um, we can say that because once again, you get one bandaging. Uh, we can say they bandaged you up here and you're down to one harm if you wish. You're down from bruised to scuffed. I will take that. Okay. Um, I, I am trying. I, I am fair. I am magnanimous. Yes. Um, and uh, we're, we're here in this horrible place. Um, so, yes, uh, you see that. You kind of, So you see that uh, in front of... Oh, yes, it's still going to... Still, you still take the one shock, so I need you to, to roll your 2d6 plus one. All right. For, for the damage. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, there uh, we are. Also seven. seven. Okay. Um, so let me see you. So... I think the thing that I will... <laughs> yeah, so I, I think this completely draws... Har uh, it makes you just not even think about Harold right now. <laughs> okay. Um, because this has your full attention at the moment. Yeah, I think he starts to step back. It's like, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. And like, uh, he's the his mind is currently figuring out how to uh, just des destroy these things. Mm -hmm. There are, yeah, as far as you can see, I mean, this thing uh, you'd probably need. I mean, you can try burning them, although that would melt the ice. Uh, right. Uh, maybe the axe. Uh, the axe is, as far as you can tell, yeah. and based on what uh, Barbish, the way Barbashev was talking about, it's probably just an axe, but it's just a little bit right. more helpful. So it, it would take a while um, to to do that. Um, 
It's just that, you know, while you hold it, you, you, while you've got hold of it, you're just not quite as affected by seeing things both terrible and horrible. Right. Um, and uh, the it will probably occur to you that the if this thing is, if whatever this is, and you do see this shadow, but it's not paying attention to you in one of the uh, in one of the icy mirrors. Um, if it is being affected by the book, maybe if you do something to the book, that might do something. Hmm. Um, but that's the only other thing that probably will occur to you while you're trying to sort this out. Maybe. Um, actually, yes, I need you... Here, here's an idea. There's a move for ah. this. This move is called... <laughs> <laughs> this move is uh, this this move is called um, um, uh, puzzle things puzzle. out yeah that's it uh, roll with reason please yeah roll with reason yeah I'm not good at reason okay so yeah um, as you're sort of trying to think about it um, it's it's like you, you are starting to you're starting to hear something and uh, what you hear is kind of this this echo, this sort of saying, this echo, sort of echoing. It's like you you tried to kill our brethren. They did kill many of mine. They were in the wrong place. They were trying to come here. It is hard. It is a hard target to hit. Hmm. Well, as long as I'm capable, I can't let any of these things get any close to any more people to hurt them. Understood. And you notice the, the light changes a little bit, so you look back and you notice that uh, at the far end of the chamber where you entered, the Yeti is entering. I'm going to move back to Harold now. So, have you thought about the have you thought about the offer? <laughs> Um, so is Harold completely lost in this vision? Does he have, like, no actual motor functions over his body as well? No, you can move around. Okay. Um. Sorry, but it doesn't seem like this is a very good offer to me if you're going to just end up eating the entire world. And does that will happen eventually anyway when the Sultan comes? Once again, I just need to reiterate that I'm finding myself not really kind of understanding what your whole hoopla is, and uh. <laughs> I'm starting to think that I don't want to know what all this hoopla is. The demon but, sultan, um, the blind god, the chaos, Azathoth. And actually, the you hear this rumbling around you. Mitchell also notices this as well, as there's this light rumble. It, it's not a huge thing, but yeah, it's the, the entire igloo kind of shakes for a second. That doesn't really sound like a name we should just be uttering, <laughs> much like this music box. <laughs> Just shouldn't be opened, and he's just gonna open his music. Box. Oh, here we go! You're opening the music. <laughs> you're opening the music box. Okay. Um. So, I once again must look to the spellcasting rules real quick. As we, uh, as this is happening, because you're attempting to uh, interact and activate with these, uh, resonate with these mirrors, as it were, using what you have. Um. Let's see. Special and uh, as we uh, as we get over here, let me check this real quick. All right. So you have an option. Um, how much lore do you have? 
I believe I have two. That's good, because I was going to declare this a two lore spell. Uh, so if you want this spell to go off, you may spend your two pieces of lore. Otherwise, there is a roll you will need to make. Uh, yeah, let's just uh, use both lore. All right. Here we go. <laughs> so... I think it's hilarious, by the way, before we go into this, that I've tried to use this goddamn music box every single session. <laughs> like, like, hmm, will it cause this person to go crazy? Will it cause this person to go crazy? What happens if I do it here? It's fair. I mean, it's fair. Um, <laughs> and if anything, you know, I like, now's the time. Um, uh, now, now would definitely be the time. Um, let's see... Okay. You would think that I had, uh... Actually, okay, we're gonna try this. Let's see how this sounds. That sounds really freaking loud. <laughs> so... A music box is going to start. Uh, Better not be Pop Goes the Weasel, man. It's 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 not going to be, but the melody isn't quite like this, but it's uh, it's not too far off. And uh, so as this happens. The rumbling starts up again, and, uh, you just sort of have the music box open in front of you, and you hear her, you hear her sort of hiss, she's like, ah! and she begins to, and she leaps across the table toward you, I would like you to, uh, act under pressure. Okay. So the box is kind of uh well no you you're still got a hold of it. And she comes forward and she just sort of reaches forward and kind of grabs you kind of at the uh at the uh, uh, kind of sort of around the neck with with both her hands. Um, which you realize now are actually more like uh, claws, uh, insect claws. Um, as Hello. she's coming forward, <laughs> and she has wings as well. This ver this this version of her, as her cloak is getting thrown off, um, and she doesn't really have. She has sort of a mess of. Uh, she has more of a mess of. Uh, sort of proboscis type or, or sort of sensory sort of little tentacle-like things. They're not exactly tentacles, but are sort of around the head. Um, and uh, I, I now need you to roll one more time because this is a sanity roll. Um, this would be a shock of three. Okay. And... So for this, um, you're going to take one less shock, so it's going to be a shock of two, uh, but you're going to be minus one forward. Uh, I need you to do the damage roll, so it's 2d6 plus two. Okay. Um, so not the worst possible thing you could roll. Um, yeah, oh, well... Okay. Um, you are knocked back. Uh, and, Mitchell, you see suddenly there's someone off to your left. Uh, as you suddenly realize, as you're sort of snapped out of this, uh, 
you realize it's Harold, uh, has just been thrown back. Harold, you're waking up. Um, and you see this, and, and you, you could hear the music box for a second, you realized, uh, as you just sort of, he was completely out of it. And then you see the music box scatter from, his, from uh, off to the, uh, off to the side, and it's now lying on its side. Um, uh, sort of a little bit of ways from, uh, on the ice, a little bit of a ways from uh, where he's lying. Mitchell, what are you doing? Um, I think I'm going to um, put away my shotgun, take off the axe, and then uh, go for the music box. Okay. Um, so you, you, you grab it, you pick it up. And the and... is getting closer. Uh... Yeah, the, the, the music box closed when it landed. Yeah, just gonna open the music box back up. Okay. And then kind of uh, brandish the axe. So, like, is the witch on him? Like, no, there's no one physically on him. Uh, ah. the, there's there's some shadows in the mirror in, in the mirrors nearby him. Hmm. Um, very good. So, uh, you do that, and the music box begins playing again, and the yeti is like. Ah. And the walls begin shaking. So, Harold, you've come to. You're, you're lying on the ground. Mitchell is standing there with the music box. It seems to be making the walls shake. What are the two of you doing? So, uh, Harold's going to call it, blow up the dang mirrors with the shadows in them. Uh, that might break the eyes of that, and these things should not be not in them. Don't break the ones that are holding down those black demon thingies, bring out all the ones that are reflecting the light and try to melt everything. Dang it, Mitchell. Don't argue with me. Yeah. Yeah, at this point I'm gonna put the axe away, then pull out uh, a sidearm, then just start firing at any um, stalactites. Excellent. Um, so this is going to be, I think, uh, more more of the, uh, yeah, just uh, resorting to violence because I think there's, a, there's an option there that you can use to... Take hold of Violence against inanimate objects. That's right. Yeah, you're trying yeah. to take definite hold of a target item. Yep, definitely take definite hold, and then I think impress this may or frighten uh, the witch or, or her friends. All right. So you hit the stalactites. And they begin. They begin coming down, um, shattering several of these mirrors. They're not like you know. They're they're blocks of ice, but they they deface them enough. They're no longer reflecting. They plunge down into these uh, into these blocks, and then you feel as though, for just a moment, as as these things are separating, uh, their 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 bodies being broken by these large uh, the, these large uh, stalactites. Uh, for a moment, you hear this almost as though you don't know if you hear it or you hear it psychically almost, but. It's terrible. This place is uh, is shaking rather violently now. Um, so, what would the two of you like to do? We gotta get the book, and it's like firing at a few more slide types, then uh, head towards uh, the dirigible. Right. So, uh, Harold's gonna take the music box and hold on to it so that Mitchell has both of his hands free to, um, you know, use his tools, um, and. Uh, Harold's going to look around and try to check out to see where the Yeti is. The Yeti is about halfway from the entrance to where you're standing. It's still like there's there's rubble falling around it, and it's clutching its head. Okay, so, uh, all right. Um, so I think, uh, so Harold's going to grab, like, a hold of the axe. Um, you're better with firearms than I am. Um, and, uh, you know, He's going to go with Mitchell and head closer to the uh, dirigible, trying to okay. avoid everything that's falling down and uh, pick up stuff, or try to find out where those books are. Two of you leap into the dirigible, um, and uh, Mitchell, ha knowing the layout of vehicles like this, gets you to where the uh, the, the the cargo uh, the cargo bay is, uh, which is likely where you're looking for this, and you see these crates that have kind of. Uh, uh, so been upended and spilled. You know, you're all just sort of you're you're you're, you're at an angle, right? Uh, as you're going down, and so the crates are all down at one end. Um, and as you're looking around, uh, you see that there are 
uh, several things. There's like pieces of furniture in here. Um, there are uh, there's there's a what looks like a harpsichord that has been smashed, um, and uh, there are uh, there's a pile of books in the corner. Okay. Um. I think uh, Harold's going to stick his axe into one of the sides in a place where it looks like it's kind of soft and will sink in and start uh, messing through the books as he's got the music box open. Okay. Uh, what's Mitchell doing while Harold's doing that? Um, I think if there's like a huge amount of books, help flip, th- flip through them. Uh, if not, if there's a measurable amount, uh, just cover the door. All right. Um... Yeah, uh, I, I, I'd like you both to uh, act under pressure, please. Okay. Uh, not, not the end of the world, um, but you do hear the, uh, the outs. Uh, the things are, you know, while you're doing it, it takes you, it takes you both a minute to gather these things up. Um, so well, so, so I, let me ask you, you have a choice. You can either grab most of them and run now, or try to get the specific book you want and possibly risk being buried alive. Uh... I don't feel lucky at all. Uh, I'm going to try to keep looking for the Book of Azathoth. All right. Got to get the right book. Okay. Um... I'm going to ask for one more roll. Okay. Uh, but, uh, it, it, and as he's getting frustrated, he's going to rip off the bandolier of Dawn. Poke around. Poke it aside. I'm actually going to ask you to poke around this time. Okay. Which roll is that? Uh, that it's is, luck. Yeah, that, that is luck. Okay. Um, so you can find a hidden area threshold, find a minor item, or determine a physical hazard present, if none. Uh, I think you, you, you get to pick from that list, basically. <laughs> Book considered a minor item. Um, so, the Book of Azathoth is, uh, would be a good item. So you'd need... Okay. Now, I will, however, however, I'll tell you what. Um, and again, this is usually we're sort of reverse engineering this, but uh, uh, Mitchell, would you like to help uh, to, to help uh, Harold? Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, all right, that's a nine. I don't recall. Uh, you make a that plus one a... if you, uh, unless you want to give him a minus one. <laughs> that's a plus one. Okay, so in what way are you? Help- you're just basically uh, uh, just digging through. Yeah, I think at some point I just uh, abandon covering the door and just start digging through. Gotcha, Harold. Uh, Mitchell kind of is helping you get this pile out, and at the very bottom, you find a thin black volume with gold leaf on the cover. Okay. Um, out of some kind of uh, leather you are not familiar with. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's something nasty, but uh, he's going to breathe a sigh of relief. A very tense sigh, I guess, because it's not over yet. He's going to grab the book and try to slide it into a, one of his jacket pockets really quick right. and maybe s- try to uh, scoop up an armful of other books. Okay. You grab it. Um, you stow it away. You scoop up an armful of other books. You're, you're doing that. Um, and so so you manage that. That's not a problem. You just toss them into your bag. And uh, you can hear the, the rumbling outside. It's getting really close now. The entire room is shaking, and you're hearing <laughs> on the uh, on the roof of the uh, of the Zeppelin carriage. Okay. Um, is there another? Can we um, try to look around and see if there's another way out apart from the way that we came in? Um, you can poke around if you wish. You know, there's another roll plus luck. I. Uh... Yeah, I'll also be doing that. Oh, hey! So, 
Uh, you've got that whole list to look through. Um, I think you're probably looking for a hidden threshold, but uh, <laughs> you can find. <laughs> yeah, it, let's yeah. go go with the hidden threshold. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you find uh, at the very edge, as this is uh, you, there. There is a uh, there is in fact a rear entrance. This is a cargo bay. Um, there's a hatch. That's actually you realize there's a ladder going up and a hatch at the top there. Okay. And um, you and you, well, I mean, you, you're not looking, but you think you see sunlight streaming from just uh, just outside it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna point up at the at the hatch. Like Mitchell, I think that's our way out. Um, you go on ahead. I'm, and uh, as he, you know, ushers Mitchell to go up first, he's going to try to repack all of the, like the books that he scooped an armful into, um, you know, his bag so that he can, uh, you know, at least free up one hand to uh, yeah. carry the music box and uh, yeah. climb out. So you secure it, Mitchell. You climb up the ladder, and you reach the top. You open the hatch, and you see that. This, uh, there was part of the igloo here, but that has fallen away. Uh, so you can now see outside. It's about a, uh, it's about a 10 foot drop, a 10, 15 foot drop from up here to the, uh, to the ground outside the clearing. Um, yeah, probably just going to wait for, uh, Hill, help him up. And, and then, uh, once we're both at the, uh, entrance, uh, just... Bend, bend our knees and hop down. Okay. The two of you surge up through this hatch, jump down, and roll as this igloo collapses completely behind you. <sighs> you have survived. And you have the Book of Azathoth and a number of other books as well. Congratulations, gentlemen. <laughs> And that is where we're going to bring this whole thing to a close. We'll do a brief epilogue as this is going. But here we are. You're able to bring the, bring the books back. You're going to have a conversation with, uh, with Barbashev, during which there is considerable... Uh, there's considerable considerable argument, um, but uh, perhaps. But you get a bunch of these books that you can trade him uh, if you want to hold on to the Book of Azathoth. So its fate is in your hands. What will become of it? So Harold Hill is going to negotiate and uh, trade Book of Azathoth to Barbashev. In exchange for him getting the um, some men to go out and fish out the rest of the library uh, from the debris, uh, um, right. he's going okay. to assume that he can trust uh, Barbashev to stow away this book and not use it for various purposes. Yeah, and Mitchell wholeheartedly agrees. Yeah, Barbashev is. Uh... <sighs> So you're going to trade him the Book of Azathoth in exchange for uh, getting to get people to recover. And what's going to happen to the rest of the books? Uh, Harold's going to take the rest of the library. Take we'll the rest that. of the library. Okay. I think that he'll he'll nod slowly as you tell him this, and uh, he says, "Well, I think you're a." Uh, Crime, bro crime boss is going to be very upset, but uh, nothing a change of name cannot do. Surprised how well it works. <laughs> surprised how well it works. One ha <laughs> and uh, I expect I'll be getting the others back. I just have to wait a while. <laughs> well, you could surely negotiate a prize with Mr. Strickland. Strickland antiques and antique accessories if you want them back. Uh, or his descendants. Yeah. See how long it takes. You're a ten-ton 
<laughs> ten kinds of weird, sir. Yeah. But, uh... Well, if not, yes. working, working for the Romanovs will do that to you. <laughs> and, uh... You have no idea how difficult it was to keep them all healthy. So... I had to do it from across the continent at one, at one point. That took a lot out of me. So, uh, we're going to leave those uh, those not subtle clues uh, just sort of dangling there. And uh, this is that is what happens. Um, I will say that with the threat removed, it is no longer as urgent for uh, if Yelena is convinced... Um, it will not necessarily be as urgent for Galena to leave, but I will leave that up to Mitchell. Mitchell, uh, which way are you going to, to sort of lean in this argument between Yelena and Galena as to who's, whether she's leaving? Um, the Mitchell believes that it's still not his decision, but what he, what he will argue is that uh, with uh, what's going on uh, in Russia politically, it's only a matter of time before that kind of stuff uh, makes its way out here. And uh, for uh, Glenn's safety, he believes it's best that uh, she come to America. Okay. That will tip things in that direction. Galena will will finally, under protest, but she will agree. Um, as long as she's able to secure setting up things all right for for Elena to make sure she's going to be taken care of. Um, and she's able to do that with people in town. That's kind of right. sorted. Um, and that is how our tale ends, with you returning to America and doing your jobs. Um, Dottie and Charlie uh, are going to uh, enter perhaps the Witness Protection Program or something similar, or perhaps they won't all head all the way back to America. Who knows? Gray will basically have certain questions answered. And uh, will receive uh, compensation for having done uh, all of his various jobs that uh, he was given to do on this trip. And that is where we end. Thank you so much for playing Tremulous. I really appreciate it. I know we went over a bit. I am sorry, as this is uh, how finales work. Um, I know you've got to immediately yeah. smash into another thing. Yeah. Um, so we're going to just uh, cut to our, uh, our outros. Uh, if you have any final thoughts on the on the campaign, feel free to let me know. Uh, uh, otherwise, just tell us uh, uh, where folks can find you. And we're going to start with Mitchell McCready, the pilot, Levi. Hello. Um, yeah, this was a great time. Uh, I hope to see and or do some more tremulous in the future. And this was a great campaign. Like, it all wound up uh, coming together quite nicely. And we did it. Uh, yeah, I'm Levi. You can follow me uh, on Twitter at Levi597. Uh, that's the best way to find all the stuff I'm doing. Uh, like, immediately after this, uh, I'm going to hop over to push.tv slash Capricorn Cross, where we will be doing the next installment of Chronicles of Casgardius, kind of anthology 5e ca campaign. It's a new chronicle where we all, are all first level, and I'm a healer with two spell slots. Yay. Pray for us. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, what's that? And then uh, Tuesdays over Katie's channel, uh, I'm, I'm in uh, Plant Obsolescence, Rise of Shadows, a Mask of New Generation game where everything's fine. We're all just one big happy family, and none of those adjectives, adjectives are true. <laughs> then I'm also doing similar spooks, the sign up for that's on Katie's Twitter. I'll be facilitating Final Girl, signing up for a few uh, more things. And yeah, that's all I've got. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming and playing this. Uh, uh, this has been great. Um, I will now, uh, uh, now heading over to Anino. Hey, I'm Anino. You can find me at, on Twitter as well at Anino Gaming, all one word. I am also, uh, hosting a stream on the Extra Light channel at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Sundays. That's a weekly show. Uh, this campaign was a bit of a challenge. It was very different from what I was, um, you know, anticipating rules wise, um, but, you know, Jim was great as always in directing the show, um, despite uh, all the challenges that sort of just cropped up. Um, things really picked up towards the end here. And, uh, you know, I'm surprised we actually survived and things came out to a um, pretty neat and tidy ending, which, you know, you never really get. 
all that often in uh, RPG, but uh, you know, definitely uh, looking forward to seeing what else comes down the line. Uh, thanks again, Jim, for having me for this four, four straight, five straight uh, campaign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're a regular around here. <laughs> yeah, so this is the fourth. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Well, folks, uh, that's it for me. I'm Jim Ryan. Um, and uh, you can find me at Other Doc on Twitch and Twitter. My website is jimmyesthatjim.com, where you can find my Geek Observation podcast and links to my various other podcasts, audio dramas, writings, and such. Uh, I've got links down below to my website, Twitter, YouTube channel, and the most recent short story that I have released. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to be off at Con Carolinas, so actually I'm not going to be doing much in the way of streaming, except Sunday. Uh, hopefully, if we get the people, I'm going to be uh, uh, doing a one-shot of Everyone is John. Um, so tune in for that. It's a comedy game. Everyone is playing the same character. They're all voices in his head. It should be delightful. Uh, Mondays, uh, I run a, a short camp. I'm running a short campaign of inspectors over on Katie's channel at Katie Face, um, and uh, that that again is a paranormal investigation comedy. Uh, so come f forward and check that out if you so desire. Uh, next week we are. St it's it's going to be June. Uh, hopefully, again, trying to get the people together still, but uh, I'm going to be uh, running or facilitating a short campaign of Tremulous. On, uh, not Tremulous, that's this. I don't know what anything is called anymore. I'm going to be uh, facilitating a short campaign of Durance uh, on Thursdays, on uh, Thursday evenings. Um, and uh, Durance is a uh, story game about uh, a prison colony on a distant planet. Um, and uh, so... Uh, we've got signups open for that still at this point. Signups for that closed Mon uh, closed Friday. Closed Friday. Um, we still have signups open, as I said, for everyone is John, and then also for a couple other uh, one shots. A few other one shots happening this month. Three days until retirement and Genesis Undone. You can check all of those out at the signup link. If you go down below, click on sign up, um, or go to jimmyusthatjim.com and click on game sign up, and information will be there. As always, beginners are welcome. Thank you all very much for watching. I very much appreciate it. Take care, and I will see you all of a sudden. Farewell. <laughs>